So today we're going to go over how you can edit this CreaI project. So in today's video, we're going to continue the series where we're basically building out your MVP for your CreaI application that you're building. That's going to include your backend, your frontend, and your deployment. So for this video, we're just going to focus on the CreaI project. That's going to be your backend, the logic that it uses, and the large language models that it leverages in order to do whatever you want it to do. After this video, we're going to focus on building out the front end. That is how the user interfaces with the application. It's going to be simple, but it's going to be clean. And then after that, we're going to focus on the deployment. That is instead of the app just living or being hosted either on your laptop, on your Google Colab notebook, we're actually going to deploy it to a server. So at the end of this, you'll have an MVP or minimum viable product. So in case you're trying to get funding or investments for this application, you'll have the minimum, you'll have a working prototype. But again, it has a back end, has a front end, and is fully deployed. Or even if it's not that serious and you're just trying to build something cool with AI that you can show off to your friends, well, you'll be able to say that you built an AI application. So let's go ahead and get started. For this Core AI project, it just leverages three agents. Each of those agents is going to be a researcher, an analyst, and a writer. And basically, depending on the input that you give it, it's going to do some research on that topic. It's going to look through web pages, it's going to scrape the web, and it's going to summarize them for you. Pretty simple, but I wanted it to be a pretty standard project so that you could edit it however you want. But again, I want to focus on walking you through the steps that you're going to do so that you can edit, save this project so that you can use it for the next step after this. So when you open the link, which I'm going to leave on the description, I'm not going to ask you for your email or anything. Just click it. This is what you're going to do with it. When you open that link, you won't be able to edit that one. That's the original version that I own, but you are able to make a copy of it. So you just have to go to file and then click save a copy and drive this is going to open a new page on your browser and again this copy that you have right here that you're seeing this is going to be your copy it's going to it's going to be saved on your google google drive so just you know change the name here to whatever you want to and then we're going to work through this google colab folder so first thing i want you to do is to click this little folder icon right here on the left and what that shows you right now is basically the files that your Google Colab notebook is accessing, right? Currently, you, you haven't done anything to this Google Colab notebook. What you copied over is really just the data on these little blocks right here. But once you start to get this running, it's gonna download some files on here. And I just want to explain to you really briefly, there's this section right here. And basically what this does is it's gonna download the code to this notebook right here, and then it's gonna go ahead and save it to your Google Drive. You only need to do that the first time that you install this you only need to do that the first time that you run this file. Once you've made the copy, like I told you earlier, once you went ahead and gone through all these installations, which all you need to install is click this little button right here, this little triangle play looking button right here. When you click it, it's going to start spinning and it's going to ask you if you want to connect it to Google Drive. You're going to go ahead and click connect to Google Drive because this is how Google Colab gets access to your drive so that it can save the project files again to your Google Drive. The same way you save your Google Sheets or your Google Docs, you all, you just need to give it access for that purpose right here. Once you give it access, you're gonna see, you're gonna click up here, this little refresh button, and you're gonna see this little icon came up here in the folders that says Drive. So this is how your Google Colab Notebook now has access to the files in your Google Drive. So as you can see here, you click Drive, My Drive, and then here from for this purpose, it's gonna be called CreaI Projects, and then the project is gonna be called Research Crew. And if you just wanna double check, you can actually just go again to your Google Drive. As you can see here, I have my drive, CreaI Projects, and we have the folder right here. And once you do that step, and once you verify that the files have been saved to your Google Drive, you can delete this whole section right here that's between the green tags. So really, you just want that cell block to look like this. And the reason for this is because again, first we made a copy of the project. So now you have your own copy saved on Google Drive. Then when we ran all this code, what would happen, what happened the first time was one, we connected this Google Colab notebook to your Google Drive, and then it proceeded to download the code for the project, which again, it was the original code that I posted on GitHub. After it downloaded that code, it then changes to this directory. So it then starts pointing at the directory where the project lives. And then it does the installations that it needs in order to run your Google Colab notebook. And again, the reason why we deleted these lines was because you only need to download the code the first time. After that, again, you have it saved on your Google Drive. You don't need to be downloading it again. 
If you keep downloading copy after copy after copy, it's just gonna go inside one folder and inside the other and, and it's just gonna get kind of messy. But you do need to leave these other parts of the code here because unfortunately, each time you start up your Google Colab notebook, you are gonna need to, again, connect to your Google Drive and then point to that folder in the Google Drive where it's connected and then go ahead and install all of the Python dependencies that the Cray AI project needs. You don't have to do any of that outside of just clicking this button, but I just wanted to be clear about why you needed to edit this part of the project whenever you start working on it in case you edit it and come back to it. So you're gonna see all this text from the installations and what it ran, you can really just click an X on here, it's just displaying the output. And now the next thing to do is to just run Python main.py in order to run your project. But remember, before you do this, you do have to go ahead and insert your API keys. And the way you're gonna find these files is again, just gonna be here in this little folder icon to the left. I already had it on mine, but just to start over, you're gonna go into the folder that says drive, then click my drive. Inside your my drive folder, there's gonna be another folder that got created earlier called Crew AI Projects. Inside the Crew AI Projects folder, you're gonna have this one called Research Crew. And again, these files are saved to your Google Drive. This is where you could just click them and edit them here within Google Colab. So let's go ahead and go to our main.py. So once it opens here, you can go ahead and change anything you want within the main.py file. It is in line nine and 10, where you're gonna wanna insert your OpenAI key and your Serper API key. Now, I know it's not ideal to use the OpenAI API key because they charge you, but something I've been finding with some of the Crew AI projects that I've been building is that with newer versions of Crew AI, there's some incompatibility issues with some of the built-in tools that Crew AI offers and trying to use a different LLM outside of Crew AI. And what I ended up finding was that to some extent, Crew AI runs by default with ChatGPT4. So for those reasons, for this tutorial, we are gonna stick with OpenAI's API key. However, if you're worried about the cost of running your crews when you're testing them, I would recommend just leaving it in GPT 3.5 instead of four. It's a lot cheaper, it runs somewhat faster, and even if your results aren't exactly where you want them to be, remember the point of this series is to build out your Cray AI project to the full extent of building the backend, which for our case is really just our Cray AI project, which is written in Python, and the LLM that we're connecting into, in this case, we're using OpenAI's GPT-3 or 4 through their API service, building out the front end, which we're gonna do with Streamlit, and then deploying this project completely online, either through Streamlit or Render. But I just wanted to clear that up really quick. So again, it is here in your main.py file where you're gonna add your API keys. And after you edit anything on here, you're gonna get this little star, meaning that the file hasn't been saved. So all you have to do at that point is just click either control save or command save. And just to go over this project for a bit, this project is already written out in such a way that when you run it, it's gonna ask the user, please enter the main topic you wanna to research. You just type in your answer and press enter. It's gonna ask you what specific questions or top or subtopics are you interested in? And then it's gonna ask you if there are any key if there are any key points or specific information you want included. This initial user input is what's gonna give context to your crew. And within this project, I have already set up how the crew is gonna run. First, you're gonna start with the research task from the researcher agent. The researcher agent is then gonna take their findings and pass it on to the analyst. The analyst is gonna take their findings and ask them to be summarized by the writing agent. And I want to mention that as you start tinkering with this project in order to make it your own, I did wanna mention something about the tasks. One of the most important parts of creating the task for your agent is gonna be defining the expected output. Now, once you read through this, you'll see that for the expected output I'm giving it, not just from the last agent, but for each agent, I'm basically giving it a template of what I think I'm gonna see almost in like a type of a report. Think of it as if you had an employee and they're doing some kind of work for you, you would want the information that they give you to be, you would want the information that they give you to be formatted in an organized way. So in this case, for the expected output, I don't just describe what I want the output to be. I actually, again, set up this template that showcases in a very literal fashion what I'm expecting to see from the work. I did that for the research task, for the analysis task, and as well as the writing task. And I just wanted to mention that if one of the problems that you're having with the LLMs that you've been using or the crews that you've been building is that the output is inconsistent or it's not what you'd like it to be, it's gonna help a lot and it's gonna go a long way once you start really describing what the expected output is supposed to look like in this attribute. And I also want to mention that when you start editing your crew or your agents or your tasks, this part, all these letters in red, you can pretty much delete and edit it to be whatever you want it to be. Anything that you see that's between quotations is really just defining the agent behavior. It's not any programming syntax. It's really just that, how you want the agent to behave or what you want the output to look like. So just as a rule of thumb, 
If the text is red, it's probably safe to delete or edit and you won't have any problems. And if worse comes to worse, you change something and you're not sure how to fix it and maybe you've tried asking ChatGPT and you're still having trouble, you can always click the link in the description again, make another copy and start from scratch. Easy as that. So here in your agents.py file is where the descriptions of your agents are written out and I've already included the fields for letting you pick whether you want to use GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. And the only section where you have to edit if you want to switch between 3 or 4 is going to be in the line or the attribute of the agent that says LLM equals. So if you want to set to GPT 3, just edit this to say GPT 3. Same thing for 4. It's a very simple change that you can make whenever you want to switch between those two. And just keep in mind that for each agent that you're using, you do have to set explicitly what GPT model you're using if you have this attribute. And just like how we were talking about in the task, that you want to be very detailed in the expected output that you give for that task. In a similar fashion, for your agents, whenever you go to the backstory attribute, you want to give it as much detail as you want. You want to be as thorough in defining what the backstory of the agent is. Now, I think calling it backstory is a little bit strange. Think of backstory sort of as the agent's resume, what their qualifications are, why they're good at the job that they're doing. I know saying backstory does seem a little bit ambiguous. I know when I first saw this attribute for backstory, I wasn't putting a lot of attention to it, so I would just write some short descriptions of you know, what I thought the agent should behave like. But when my results really started getting better was when I started improving the description of this, just trying to be as detailed as possible as far as what I wanted from the agent. And then again, also changing and extending the length of the expected output on the tasks. And the same logic that applies to the other files applies here. If you see red text anywhere on this file, you can delete it, change it, edit it, and there won't be any syntax problems whenever you run your Python project. So let's go ahead and run our Python project. And remember for this one, you do have to type in a response to what it's asking you. It's gonna ask you, please enter the main topic of information. So here you can pick whatever you want. You can say something like cars, and then you can ask it something like how to modify my Toyota. For this last part, we're just gonna put best way to make it loud. And then we're gonna press enter. And here we have our output. Now, I wouldn't say this is the best output. It is in GPT-3. And also keep in mind, even though I did write some long descriptions for the backstory and for the expected output, that was just more for you to be able to see a sample of what I mean when I say detailed descriptions. The whole point of this project is in fact for it to be a template of three agents that you can edit and fine tune to do basically whatever you want to do for this project that we're going to build a front end for and deploy as well. So spend some time building out this project, editing it, and if you get stuck anywhere or you have some questions, I have one-on-ones available through my Calendly link. I'm really excited to start building out the front end with you guys. Let me know in the comments what it is that you want for your Create AI app to do. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.